is, I'll just say it, muzzles have a bad rap, and so do the dogs who wear them, and maybe even the owners holding the ends of the leash of those dogs. But muzzles can be an incredibly helpful tool for dogs and the owners who need them, and the negative stigma that's associated with muzzles makes all of us and I, I do mean all of us, I mean you and your dog and dogs who need muzzles and their owners and everybody, it makes all of us less safe. So I'll explain, uh, but first of all, if you're new here, my name is Jennifer Malloway. I'm a dog trainer and behavior consultant, and my job is to help you have the most magical relationship you possibly can with your dog. And we've got a lot of good co topics coming up, and so if you don't want to miss out, be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube or like or follow me on Facebook so that you don't miss a thing. And also, uh, I will have a dog parkour class coming up this spring, and dog parkour is amazing, and it's, it's a great sport for all dogs, even those who might need a muzzle. Um, and so if you think that that's something you might be interested in, there's a link to sign up to get notified about when registration opens for that class. Um, down below. Um, so check that out if you're interested. Um, so about those muzzles, <laughs> um, we, will, we will get to the meat of it, um, but I'd first like to take you on a little journey. Um, come with me. <laughs> this is, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna describe this scenario and I want you to really just, just use your imagination here. Um, so say that your dog, yes, yours, the cutest, sweetest dog in the whole wide world, um, who wouldn't hurt a fly, <laughs> imagine that you are out in the world with that little sweetheart, your baby, and it is a gorgeous summer Saturday, and it's a blissful 72 degrees and sunny, and you have decided to go to the park. It's a gorgeous green field, and you're late. You've laid out a picnic blanket. You've brought some snacks, and you are just. This is your time to relax. It's the first time you've really relaxed in maybe a long while, and a lot of other people had this idea too. Uh, you know, it is Saturday after all, so people are are showing up at the park. You're enjoying watching kids run around, watching the adults play ball, um, and you're just having a great time, and your pup is chilling on the blanket beside you, and this cute, this adorable little kid wanders over and asks really politely if it's okay if they pet your dog, and you know your dog would never hurt anybody, so you're like, sure, no problem, everything's going great, and then something happens and you don't really know you don't really know what happens like a ball from someone's volleyball game kind of accidentally gets hit over onto your blanket and it splatters your food somewhere so you're trying to clean that up but you're not too worried about about anything because your dog wouldn't hurt a fly right um and then all of a sudden you hear some yelling and screaming this kid starts crying and you turn around and it appears as though your dog has bitten this this kid. Their parents are running over. Um, it's there's a lot of confusion, a lot of yelling, um, and we're not sure. We're just not sure exactly how how all this happened. Um, now I'm gonna stop here because your brain is probably fighting this narrative because this isn't your dog. This would never happen to you, right? Um, but that's exactly what a lot of owners who find themselves in these situations are thinking until it happens. And I intentionally left out any details about what what your dog might have been going through uh, in the hours and days leading up to this or what exactly happened um, because it doesn't matter. The thing is that any dog can bite and even, <laughs> I mean, like, I, I can't tell you how many times I hear, pe hear uh, people say, like, their dog will do something. It doesn't have to be, I'm not, it doesn't always have to be a bite. I'm just saying, like, dogs, the, their owners will be like, he's never done that before. 
you know, that phrase, oh, I can't tell you how often I hear it. And a bite is one of those things that he may never have done before until it happens. Um, and even the sweetest, most lovable cuddly dogs under the right circumstances can bite. Um, and as responsible owners, we will just, we'll just be aware of that fact. It doesn't mean that you always have to be on edge or anything like that. Um, but it's, it's a fact that if we accept it, we can better set ourselves, our dogs, and the rest of the, the rest of the public up for success. Um, and so it, it, in this scenario, um, you, anybody is, is probably going to be feeling a lot of conflicting emotions. Any of the following, you might be feeling confusion as to how this happened or how your dog, like how your dog could do that. Your dog is not a biting dog. Um, maybe defensiveness for your dog. If if you've got people angry at you or your dog, you know, it's, you want to defend your dog because they don't know him. They don't, like, who are they? Who are they to judge? Um, you're probably angry that someone did something, obviously, to cause your dog to do this. Um, and maybe guilt that anybody got hurt in the first place and it was your dog. Uh, probably anxiety that now that you know this could happen, it could happen again, um, could probably a lot of fear about what this means for the future with, with your dog. Um, depending on how bad it could, it was, you know, possibly fear for your dog's life. Um, but definitely like mourning for, for the life that you thought you had with your dog, because things are probably going to change after that. Um, let me see. Uh, I, I want to say hi, Jackie. Thank you for being here. And hi, David. And, uh, say says sometimes doggos don't like some people and they react kind of off. Uh, some of my dogs get anxious outside, so they don't always like everyone that approaches them. Yes. And that's, that's part of what we're going to talk about today. Um, because there is, there does seem to be this assumption, not, not from everybody, but a, a, enough people that it's, it warrants talking about. Um, but there seems to be this assumption that dogs are here for us to touch and pet and pick up and play with and, and do whatever we want, we want with, uh, regardless of how they might feel about it. Um, luckily, I think that the, the bulk of the, <laughs> the population, you know, is this, this mindset is changing, um, but not fast enough if you ask me, um, which is why I want to talk about it. I want, I want, uh, dogs deserve that understanding from us. Um, so you guys are already here, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's worth talking about. Um, my, my point with the whole story here is not that your dog is going to bite someday, because the fact is most dogs don't. Um, my point is that any dog can under the right circumstances and dogs who bite are not bad dogs and their owners are not bad owners. Um, and the more people who understand this, uh, the better off we all are because, and if, if this is you one day, um, you're going to appreciate people who are compassionate and who understand, who give you those knowing nods and they smile if you're out with your dog who happens to be in a muzzle, you know, you're definitely going to appreciate that. And maybe um, by just taking a moment to, to think about how you'd feel if you just found yourself unexpectedly in that situation, it might help us to just offer that compassion to other people. Um, because an owner who does find themselves needing to muzzle their dog and I don't, I, I, I may have given the impression off the bat that a dog is muzzled because they have a bite history. Not the case at all. And we're going to talk about that. Um, but any dog uh, or, or any owner who has to muzzle their dog for any reason is probably going to feel, you know, a lot of disappointment that their life with their companion isn't exactly what they imagined or what they wanted um, and and worry and fear about that stigma and how it makes them look like they're going to worry about like how people are looking at them and um, it can be really disheartening and people in that position deserve <laughs> that understanding and that compassion um, 
they deserve not, definitely not, to be made to feel like more shame and more judgment and more loneliness. It it, it definitely makes people feel a little a bit isolated um, when you're in this situation and you feel like nobody understands. Um, so, and with with all of that stigma, <laughs> um, you know. Sometimes, sometimes there there does become a legal mandate, you know, that a, a, a particular person must muzzle a particular dog in public. But um, in a lot of cases, it is still left up to the owner to make that judgment call. And with all of that public stigma and and that perception surrounding muzzles, um, a lot of people may choose not not to put their dog in a muzzle, not to train their, not, not to muzzle train their dog, or maybe just not to have them wear it sometimes when they probably should, if they wanted to do the really responsible thing. Um, that, all of that stigma might prevent people from, from having their dog in a muzzle when they probably should, which again, makes us, if, if they're going to be anywhere near other people or other dogs, it, it could potentially put other people at risk. It's a liability um, for all of us. And um, so we we want to make it easier, right? For for people to be able to use the, the equipment and the gear that they need to in order to keep their dog and everybody around them safe. Um, Wagging Tails, hi, welcome. Good to see you here. <laughs> I'm glad you could join us for a bit too. Um, so... Uh, yeah. And, and, and here's the thing is that like, if, <laughs> um, it doesn't mean that, that, uh, that dog is necessarily a danger, but if, uh, if for, there's some reason that a dog should be wearing a muzzle, um, and they're, they're not, their owner has a, has a choice to either, uh, take them out into public without it, which, puts somebody at risk, whether it's the dog themselves or people around them, dogs around them, um, or their other choice is that dog just doesn't get to go out as much. They have their life, you know, restricted. Um, and it's not really fair to that dog either. So um, it, it's it's really, it's best for everybody all around if we can kind of change the way that we think about muzzles. Um, and that is why I want to talk about this today. Um, so let's get into like other reasons why a dog might wear a muzzle. Um, we, we talked about biting, um, and that is, that one's pretty obvious. Um, dogs are not always comfortable with other dogs or with certain people. Um, and if, if we know that a dog, uh, may bite, uh, a muzzle keeps them safe. Um, but also, uh, some dogs consume inedible things like rocks or clothing or bits of toys or anything that they find that, if ingested, uh, could be potentially life-threatening for them. Not to mention uh, that surgery required to, to, to save that dog is not cheap. Those surgeries are expensive. Um, I know someone who, what last we talked, um, had spent about $56,000 on a number of, of surgeries to uh, to extract things that their dog had swallowed that they shouldn't have. Um, that is a ton of money, right? Like I could not afford that. I could not afford to keep that dog. Uh, so a muzzle would be a, a good solution for a dog who has that tendency. Um, yes, $56,000. And that was just the last time we talked. Like, I don't know if, if that dog ended up consuming anything else. Um, but I don't believe he ever wore a muzzle. They just, they tried to manage it as best they can, but hey, accidents happen, you know? And with dogs, we things happen all the time. So <laughs> yeah, um, let's see, Wagging Tail says, I never really thought of muzzles like this. I feel like whenever you see a dog in a muzzle, you think, oh, that dog must be aggressive. And what you're saying is that that's not the case, right? Uh, yeah, that is right. Um, now I do think it's a good idea to give those dogs space, but, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that that dog is aggressive. And regardless of whether the dog is aggressive or not, we should be, uh, we should be showing some compassion to that owner, um, solidarity, even if it's at a distance. Um, yeah. So people, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, a, a dog, a dog might ingest inedible things that, that require surgeries. A dog might just be really, really good at sniffing out food and at least 
where I just came from, there was a lot of potentially dangerous foods that they could find out. I swear to you, there was one day I was took took my dog and um, a client dog to the park and we're walking around and the, the dogs start pulling all of a sudden, which is unusual because um, they're very well trained. Um, and I'm like, what the heck? And they pull me toward a uh, grocery, like a paper bag, grocery bag that says it, permanent marker written on the side. It says free chicken. <laughs> and I didn't get close enough to like actually look in the bag, but up on uh, a ledge right next to it was a whole like rotisserie chicken. Um, and I get like people, someone probably put that there trying to help out the homeless. I don't know, but you never expect these things to happen. Like, and this is an off-leash park. Like, I may not have had those dogs on leash. I just happened to at the time. And if if one of my dogs had just run over there real quick and, and found that bag, like, first of all, my dog's allergic to chicken. Second of all, we know that cooked chicken bones can be very dangerous. Um, so crazy stuff happens and we you just you just never know so if you have a dog who is prone to finding things like that if you've got a scent hound especially oh my goodness um these things can happen and if they don't have a really good recall or a really good leave it um your dog could end up in danger and a muzzle is the type of thing that could prevent that dog from getting into too much trouble um so yeah uh could be could be inedible items, could be edible items, items that could be dangerous. Um, and some dogs, they may not have any any kind of bite record whatsoever, but they may be the type of dog who just prefers some space. And there are other um, things that they can wear, um, but they they may be less effective. If your dog really needs space, um, a muzzle is a great deterrent. You know it. It keeps people at a safe distance because they don't know. They don't know why your dog might be wearing a muzzle. Um, and it's really hard when you're out in public and um, like if, if you have a dog who's in need of space, like say you you said uh, at least one of your dog uh, dogs um, prefers, pref prefers to have a little space. Um, when people come up, like they probably ignore you if <laughs> if you're like oh no we need space i've had plenty of people just completely ignore my protests like no please leave give us some distance people don't hear you you can't it's really hard to just have that dialogue in the moment and be able to meet your dog's needs um so having them wear something like maybe a uh uh, a harness that says you know we need space or um they have some bandanas but a lot of dogs wear bandanas and sometimes that message doesn't come across as clear as would a muzzle. Um, so if you really need dis distance for your dog who has no bite record, um, a muzzle could achieve that. Um, and it you, muzzles do require training. I'm not suggesting that anybody just slap a muzzle on their dog, um, but it's, it's one solution to a problem. Um, let me check in with you guys here. So, uh, <laughs> um, Wagging Tail says, one of, the, one of the dogs I walk eats everything. Last time I walked her, she literally ate a plastic bag. Oh my gosh, yes, uh, because there was a donut in there. Got it out of her mouth, but it was kind of scary. I mean, yeah, like dogs are scavengers, right? They eat, like this is so common. Um, and yeah. Um, it, it, it happens. She says, now I kind of want to see if I could walk around some sort of muzzle. Um, I think you need to do muzzle training, yes, uh, but eventually they will adjust. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the training in a moment, um, and I'll, I'm going to give you guys a, a really, really good resource and a lot more education on this if you're interested. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it is so annoying when people do that. It's like, I just asked you not to do that. Why are you completely ignoring me? And this is the thing. It's because a lot of people don't understand dogs as well as we would like. Um, and this is, this is why I'm here, guys. I want, I want to help people understand dogs better so that all of, all of us, like us, our dogs, people who are going to interact with our dogs, like everybody's better off with, with more understanding. So yeah. Um, Ginger says my Shih Tzu probably needs a muzzle. <laughs> his in initial instinct is to bite fingers reaching down at him. He doesn't like things on his head. Do they adjust? Um, do they adjust to wearing the muzzle? 
uh, with with the proper training, yes. Um, they can also adjust to fingers reaching down and things on their head, um, but it, it requires training just the same as a muzzle would. Um, so there are different ways to approach that sort of situation. Um, Ginger says, I tell everyone not to pet initially and he'll be their buddy, but he's so little and cute, it's the natural thing to do. And you've hit the nail right on the head there. It is the natural thing to do. Like when we see a cute dog, all of us probably, you know, we just, we just want to, we want to mm, touch and pet and oh my gosh, they're like, that's, that's what dogs do to us. And it's why those conversations are really hard to have. It's because you're, you're very aware of your dog's needs and you, maybe you've even practiced like how to, how to say these things in public. But when it comes down to it, that person is not in like, let's have a discussion mode before I approach. They're just like, you're here, your dog's cute. Like, I'm gonna walk up and say hi and while I'm gonna listen while I, oh, you didn't want me to touch, oops. Like, it's just, there's this disconnect and it's hard. Um, and so that's why sometimes if there's not time to have those conversations, a muzzle can get that, uh, get that information across very quickly. And if your dog does have any, any inclination to want to snap or, or bite at somebody, um, then a muzzle is going to prevent them from doing any damage. Um, so they, yeah, they're, they're good. <laughs> they're good for a lot of reasons. Um, uh, Wagging Tail says, my dog can be sort of dog aggressive on leash. And sometimes people will come up to her with their dogs. Uh, and when she snaps because she's scared and stuff, the owners get upset with me and I get so mad. Girl, I am with you. I have the same thing. My dog is also dog reactive on leash. And I can't tell, like, there have been a lot of people adopting puppies lately. And especially when it's a new dog owner with a new dog um, and they're very inexperienced and they don't have all of this understanding because who who goes who goes to the trouble of like oh, tons and tons of education before they bring the dog home, right? unlikely so they don't know what kind of things can happen and they just it's there's there's these assumptions that like that dog is a bad dog and because my puppy's an angel and would never do such a thing uh, my puppy can do no wrong um so it's you and your dog that are you're the problem right like i just don't know um and and it is frustrating and i feel like i i have these emotions i i feel all these like the, the guilt and the like sadness and the loneliness. I'm like, I want to be able to, to interact and I want my dog to be able to interact. But like these conditions just aren't right for my dog. Um, but I also want him to be able to go out and have access to the world. And we do the best we can to avoid any triggering situations, but like things happen. So yes. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, Final, final reason. There's one more. Um, there are times that a vet or a groomer might require your dog to wear a muzzle and you may not always have the choice. <laughs> um, if you want your veterinarian or your groomer to provide the services that you need for your dog. Um, and I read, and, and the reason that I was thinking about this recently is because I read a really, really great blog article, um, by Eileen Anderson and she tells a story about uh, how her dog, sweetest little thing, would never hurt a fly. Um, had um, she had started, she had eye issues, and she started having to do eye drops several times a day. And some of the eye drops were painful. And the dog had learned to do this like um, avoiding head whip when they had to do the eye drops. And then one day uh, they were at the vet for to, a couple of things. Um, and the vet was gonna do the eye drops and the little dog, sweetest little dog, did her little head whip thing. Um, her owner knew that that was not gonna to lead to a bite because she'd seen it a million times, but the vet doesn't know that. And the vet has a right to feel safe, for their staff to feel safe. Um, and if if they if that's what they require, then a responsible owner is, is going to be ready to allow that um, in order to get their their dog what they need and also be able to care for the the other humans interacting with their animal. Um, this is not cruel of of the the vet or groomer or any behavior professional. Um, it's it's not cruel at all. It's just because they have a need to pr protect themselves and they have a right to feel safe and they do not know your dog as well as you do and so if it just makes them feel better 
it's better all around. Um, Wagging Tails, I know you got to go. So thank you so much for, for joining us for a bit. Um, yeah, so like I said before, like <laughs> any dog can bite and dogs who have never bitten before, like if they bite, there's always, there's a first for everything. Um, and so your, your dog professionals may, they may ask this of you. And if your dog has had prior muzzle training, even if you never think you're going to need it, uh, if you go through muzzle training, then one day when the vet asks, like, we just need to muzzle your dog for, for this procedure. Um, your dog's in pain. We just don't know what they might do. Um, if their first experience has been really positive with all of the training, um, then ha them having to wear it at the, at the vet or the groomer is going to be not, not as big a deal. Whereas if they are at the vet because some, they've had an accident, maybe they're in pain, something's wrong. Um, they're, they're already hurting. They're in a, a stressful place because a lot of times going to the vet is stressful uh, for the dog. They've got people handling them, which is also stressful, and they're doing weird procedures. Like all of those stressors add up. Um, and then if on top of that, your vet is like, we got to put a muzzle on them, like, your dog, I mean, that is just stress through the roof for your dog. Um, and if that's their first experience with the muzzle, oh, it's, it just, it, it compounds all that that your dog is experiencing. And so had, had we done some prior muzzle training, it, we could just take the edge off just that little bit. Um, so yeah, you, you just never know what can happen. Um, I feel the same way about, uh, about dog crates. I think that they're great tools for a lot of, a lot of purposes. Um, but many people prefer not to use them and that is absolutely their right. Um, but even for those people, I still suggest that they do crate training because there will come a day when that dog needs to be put in a crate and it's going to be less stress on the dog if they've had all these good experiences with it first. Uh, first impressions, you know what they say, like they really matter. They matter with everything that your dog encounters in life. We want their first impression to be really nice. Um, so we're gonna that we're gonna come we're gonna come to the training and how we make it fun. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of people, you know, even if they don't have that um, that judgment about. Uh, about the dog being a bad dog if they're wearing a muzzle, they may have this judgment that the owner is cruel. Like putting, how could you put a muzzle on your dog? Like that's so cruel. Um, but that doesn't help anybody either, right? So for for many dogs, if, if wearing a muzzle buys them the freedom to go out into public um, and to enjoy things that they might otherwise not get access to, you know, the, the muzzle gets that for them. And so the alternative, if if they don't wear a muzzle might be worse. If not wearing a muzzle means that they don't get to go out, that they get taken on fewer trips with their people because we just don't know. Um, it's a hot day and I can't leave you in the car and you can't come with me. So I guess you're staying home, buddy. Um, that's going to happen a lot more for that dog and they're going to have their world shrink. And I think that's sad. I mean, for some dogs that for some dogs that might be preferable, but those dogs are few and far between. For for the great majority of dogs, um, getting to go out uh, with with thoughtful preparation about where you're taking them, um, it's going to be so much better. Um, because a lot of times, like if a dog has has bitten even once, um, and we know that it might happen again, um, that dog might be great most of the time with other people and with other dogs, and they might love running around in the field and the beach and wherever. Um, and we know a, a bite is not likely, but if it could happen, and them wearing it means that they get to go, then how is that cruel? I mean, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> Wagging tails, you're back for a few minutes. I love this game. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. So it's for for the owner. It's it's a tough choice. Um, but taking proper precautions um, just to make sure that nobody ends up hurt, uh, the dog doesn't end up with more bites on their record because accidents happen. Um, it's it's better for everybody involved. Um, 
and for you know for for the dogs for the owners of dogs who are those who don't bite but they they might ingest things they shouldn't um again that owner might not feel comfortable letting them off leash and we know dogs need off leash time leash walks are not enough um and if the owner is like well you're either muzzled or you're staying on leash all the time again we're really restricting that dog and that's not fair to that dog um that's not what they're that's not what they're meant to, <laughs> the life that they're meant to lead, right? Um, yes, it's it's like a win-win. Um, and hey, Jesse, welcome. <laughs> Dog gets to go out, nobody gets hurt. That's, that's the biggest win for everybody. Um, now we just need for that owner to feel like it's a win um, because they know that they're not going to be judged and their dog's not going to be judged because doesn't, like, we all want everybody else to love our dogs, right? Um, and if, if you have a dog who sometimes looks aggressive or maybe has even bitten, like you kept that dog because you know that he's still an awesome dog. He's still so sweet. You still want people to just adore him. Um, and just cause under certain conditions, he might act in ways that scare people. Um, it doesn't mean that he's bad and you don't want people to think that. So, um, so that's what this is all about is like helping people to just understand, um, so that there's less, less stigma involved. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I said that there are some circumstances where, um, a dog might actually be better off just, just staying at home most of the time. Um, if, if they are just really fearful or they're not, they're not at all a dog person or a, a dog person, a dog dog or a person dog. <laughs> um, it like, yes, there, there, this, it does happen. Um, it's, it's rare, but it happens. Um, but even for those dog and owner teams, um, things are going to happen. Like that owner might want to have people over that owner might, need to have service people come into the home at some time. Um, they, I mean, they might need care for that dog someday, you know, you might need a sitter. Um, and if your dog has that history, try finding a sitter or a dog professional who's willing to work with your dog. If you're like, I've taken no precautions to protect the people who interact with him. Like it's going to, it's going to make life difficult for you. <laughs> and these are the types of situations that we don't always foresee and training a dog to wear a muzzle takes time. Um, it's not, like I said before, you can't just slap it on and expect the dog to accept it. Um, so this is the type of training that you want to do well in advance of ever needing it. Um, and it's why I suggest that all puppies get muzzle trained. Um, and I, I mean, I worked at a, at a puppy preschool for years and you would not believe the looks on people's faces when we would tell them that part of all of the socialization and training that we're doing um, is introducing them to muzzles. People were like, but he's a puppy. Like, oh my goodness. Like how, how could you? It, it was, <laughs> um, they didn't, they didn't say it like that, but just you could see in their face sometimes um, that we would get that reaction. But the thing is the training uh, for, a puppy or a dog, training them to, to accept a muzzle, it's fun. It's all fun and games and food. And the dog is having a great time learning that muzzles are great. Like if they're not, we're doing the training wrong. So, um, so introducing them to, to the muzzle is like, it's enjoyable for the dog. It is not cruel at all. The dog, I mean, the dog has no idea, like, they don't know what this is for the dog. This has no meaning for us. This is like, oh my gosh, this is scary. This is like Bane. This is, it, it's like a terrible thing. But the dog, no, they have no feelings about this whatsoever until we teach them, right? So if the first time we introduce a dog or a puppy to the muzzle, we're just like, set it down. I'm gonna pretend I'm setting it down on the floor here. <laughs> um, you just set it down, maybe toss some treats in there and the dog can like, find the treats and walk away and there's no pressure, there's nothing, like, then their first experiences with this muzzle are gonna be like, hey, sometimes awesome things appear in this weird contraption, like who knew? Um, and then just, you know, like um, those videos were gr going around where people were training their dogs to like stick their nose through their hands, um, same thing. Uh, you just train your dog to stick their nose in there for treats 
and it's a, it's, it's a fun game for them. Um, and I'm not going to go through a whole training plan here today, but um, the, I told you guys I'd give you um, a really good resource where you can get full plans and lots more information. And that is at a website called um, the Muzzle Up Project, muzzleupproject.com. Um, it's it's really fabulous. It's put, put together by some of the best uh, trainers who work with aggressive dogs um, and they're doing a great job trying to change that that perception and that stigma um, and it's it's very I find it to be very clear uh, so if you are interested in doing the training yourself um, it's a good place to to start and get some a really good idea of, of how like step by step how to go through it um, so yeah like if, if you want to have uh, the option of ever having your dog wear a muzzle without putting them through undue stress, um, it's to, for it for it not to be a cruel option, you got you got to go through the training. It doesn't mean like, okay, we bought a muzzle, we've got it handy just in case you got to teach the dog. Um, and it does take time. Um, and if you're doing it right, uh, you're always going, at the dog's pace. You're never asking them to do, to interact more with this in a way that makes them uncomfortable at all, not even a slight little bit. So it's not, it is not cruel. Um, and then if you've done it well, by the end, you'll be able to put it on, uh, strap it on, attach the whatever other gear that they're wearing, go out and the dog will have a great time. Like I said, they get access to, to the world. The owner has some peace of mind that they're not going to ingest anything dangerous. They're not going to bite anybody. Um, so it it allows us as the the guardians of these animals um, to relax a little bit, to be able to breathe. Like, okay, I don't have to always be on edge and be like so so vigilant about who's around us and who you you know. Um, it it gives us some some peace, kind of. <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't the best way to say that, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, like, um, so with the training, our goal is to make it really fun, really enjoyable and create a very, very positive, uh, create positive feelings in the dog about this thing. Um, and yeah. Um, so what I've, what I've got here, <laughs> um, there are, there are different types of muzzles and I, I, I think it's important to kind of, um, talk about those types because they're very different and they they're um, they exist for very different purposes um and what i've got here uh is the your standard basket muzzle um and this is um baskerville i was looking for the brand uh this is a, a, a baskerville um these you can find almost anywhere but it's not the only brand um out there and depending on uh, the, your dog's facial structure, uh, you might need to take into consideration, um, what, what different types of muzzles to get, um, for our brachycephalic dogs, uh, the ones with the, the smush noses, um, this isn't going to fit quite as well as some different models, um, but a basket muzzle is what you're going for. You, you do want to make sure that it is properly sized, um, because no matter how well you've done the training, if, if it's, if it's inherently uncomfortable, um, it's going to be much harder for your dog. So, um, yeah, so, so we, we definitely want, we want to make it comfortable, which also means making sure it's the right fit. Um, and considering the shape and the shape of your dog's face also matters because if it doesn't fit and they can get it off their face, um, it's not serving the purpose <laughs> that it's intended to, right? Um, so, but the, the point, like whatever model you get, whatever shape, whatever brand, um, the, the, um, the point of the basket muzzle is that the dog still has, uh, plenty of airflow, um, and, and enough room that you can, you can feed treats through here. Um, I, I walked a dog for a while, um, who he had to wear a muzzle every time we left the house. Um, and he, we were just feeding treats through the muzzle all the time. Um, and he, he loved it. He, it, the, the muzzle didn't phase him at all. And he got to go out on walks that he might not have, might not have otherwise. So they can, um, they can eat, they can drink, they can pant. Um, the basket muzzle is the best option for most situations. Um, but there are 
other muzzles that exist and it's really important to know the difference because um, the other main type of muzzle is your grooming muzzle or the cloth muzzle um, and I don't have one of those uh, here but it, the, it you're, you're gonna know it because it doesn't look like this <laughs> um, it uh, it's gonna keep their mouth like more closed um, it's it's more like a fabric loop that they uh, stick their snout through and they can't they're not going to be able to pant and, and eat and drink through it or or bite um, but um, you don't want to have a dog wearing this uh, for for long stretches of time um, they because if a dog can't pant they can't regulate their body heat which is very dangerous for their health um, so even if they look cuter or maybe less scary those are not good options uh, for you to just have your dog wear on a daily basis or or for any length of time. Um, they are mainly strictly for at the groomer or the vet for very brief amount of times, like while you have to do some procedure. Um, so yeah, if if you're gonna do any of this any of this training, I would do the training with the basket muzzle because that's much more likely and it's much more safe for your dog. Um, and if you don't, I mean, I like black, uh, but if black looks looks more scary to you. They definitely come in all sorts of fun colors now. Um, thanks probably uh, in great part due to the Muzzle Up project that I mentioned. Um, there are companies coming out with all these different customizable colors and, and patterns for the muzzles. You can get like, you can make them look really sweet and fun. Um, or you can, you know, some people have just gotten like duct tape and made their own, made their own little patterns. Um, make little modifications. Some people have put like a uh, little padding under here so that when it rests on the dog no dog's nose, it's, it's even softer. Um, there are ways to make them like look less scary and be more comfortable for your dog. Um, but yeah, we, we just, we want to make sure that the dog is still able to eat, drink, breathe, <laughs> um, and, and also not bite. Um, so Karen, uh, hi and, and welcome. Um, there we go. Uh, she said, I just love how you love dogs. When you talk about them, your face just lights up. I love people that love animals. And so do I. Um, and I, thank you for saying so. I, I, I really do. I, it's funny. I was taught, I actually, so I was calling, I was calling, I called, um, a good friend of mine yesterday, um, because she has a dog who wears a muzzle sometimes. Um, and I, I wanted to get her input. And, um, it, it's like, we, it was just funny because she told me, and I didn't realize this, that she grew up and she was way more of a cat person. And I'll tell you guys, so was I, like, I was, I, I mean, I, I've always considered, considered myself to be an animal person. I've always loved animals. We had a neighbor down the street from our, uh, our house growing up who had like, I, I think it was like 14 different animals of a bunch of different species and I was so jealous of them always we had we had so many like rodents growing up we had family dogs um but we never had a cat and I was just like dying to have a cat because I loved cats and just the the course that my life has taken like now you know I work with dogs and I've, I've grown to see like like dogs are amazing I still love cats I really do um but I don't know dogs are special <laughs> So, um, so yeah, but, um, speaking of, of my, my friend and, and her experience, you know, she's one of those people who just, it, she has felt like it's, it's something that is really hard to talk about, even among people who know her, who know her dog, um, and they know dogs really well in general. Um, it's still really, it's just hard because most people don't have to no don't have to muzzle their dog um, ever in life. Most dogs do not bite, um, but it can it can make you feel very isolated, even among people who love you and who get you. It just it it's this really hard thing to talk about, and so that is why I just I thought it would be a good idea to have this discussion. And I'm so glad that you are all giving me some uh, some input and some feedback about you know your experiences and your perceptions. I love this. Um, because yeah, it's, it's one of those things. We just, we need to talk about it more. Um, I think that will help, uh, everybody, dogs and people alike. Um, 
And she brought up some really good points. Um, and I, I have to say a huge thank you to her for, for bringing up some things that I didn't even think about. Um, like other situations where you might suddenly want to have a dog who's muzzle trained just in case. Um, people who are, you know, pretty young and thinking about starting families, you know, say you have a dog who you know them very well, you have learned how to manage their behavior down pat, they're able to get out and live their life, but you're able to keep other people safe, but you're not sure how great they'd be around a new baby. Um, but you're not absolutely not going to get rid of this dog because you love them. Um, like, it's, it's an extra layer of precaution that maybe you'd want to consider. Um, just, just something to, to have in the back of your mind there. Um, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you, if you like to entertain and, and, uh, want to bring people around, like, there are other ways to, um, to manage uh, a dog who is a potential threat. You know, there's other rooms, there's gates and doors. Um, but again, if that dog is likely okay, and they might be more upset by being shut out and excluded from everything, um, a muzzle could be a great way to just, just make sure that everybody feels safe, um, but the dog still gets to be included. Um, let's see, she, uh, I've got, I, I was taking notes on her call because she made so many good points. Um, you know, speaking to the um, the point about uh, new puppy owners, um, I may have some new puppy owners here watching who uh, just want to learn about how to how to best care for their dog and how to set their dog up for success. Um, and even if they don't want to do muzzle training for their own dog, um, which is their prerogative, that's fine. Um, you should still understand about how to protect your puppy. You know, because due to this stigma, like I said, some people who should maybe use a muzzle with their dog don't. And so if you are out in public, you've got this innocent little puppy, they've got all their vaccinations, you're so excited to get them to, to get to take them everywhere with you. Um, and you let that puppy wander up to every person and every dog because you heard that they needed socialization. Um, you have to understand that a lot of dogs are not going to take kindly to that. A lot of good dogs are not going to take kindly to that. Dogs, it is it is a normal part of canine development that some time between the ages of one and three years old, usually, uh, they are going to become less playful overall, less um, more selective about who their playmates are, and less tolerant of rude dog behaviors. And guess what? Puppies, they don't know about about dog dog etiquette yet they they have to learn all that um so puppies exhibit a lot of rude behavior um and some dogs just are not very tolerant of that and they might be wonderful dogs otherwise um but that's why it's really important not to just let your puppy wander up to dogs on the street that's not what socialization is um and i am going to do a talk about socialization on monday uh so if you want to learn more about that come back on monday at four um but um yeah, it's, it's with anybody with a new puppy, I mean, they, they do need to get out. They need to see the world. They need, they do need to meet the right people and dogs and have really positive, um, experiences with them. And if they accidentally, if, if, their owner very innocently just lets their dog wander up to, to the wrong dog and that, and something happens, um, that puppy in their very impressionable, uh, developmental period, um, having had a, a bad experience like that is going to affect who that dog is, but possibly for life. Um, so we, as a, as a puppy trainer myself, you know, I take great pains to make sure that any dog who is in my care for any length of time, if they are, especially if they are within three to 16 weeks old, that, that, um, those weeks, especially I mean, beyond absolutely too, but, but especially those weeks, that is such an impressionable age. And I take great pains to make sure that every experience that dog has is positive, um, because it affects, it affects who they are for, for their life. Um, Karen, thank you. She says, I'm so glad that David told us on morning invest about you and your channel. I've really enjoyed all of your shows. 
Karen, that means so much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad he did too, because it's been really fun having you here. Um, he's he, telling me he should keep doing that. <laughs> keep keep giving me those plugs. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so um, anyway, so yeah, if you've got a puppy, uh, don't don't let them interact with unknown dogs that we just we just don't know. Um, we want to we want to protect them and by doing so you also protect that dog cuz here's the thing for for dogs who bite it's not just a danger to the dog or the person that they bit it's a danger to them right because in some localities uh dogs only get one bite or uh, three bites you know before they're um labeled a dangerous dog dizzy i don't have treats today i'm sorry bunny we we ate them all <laughs> Um, so, so depending on where you live, um, the laws may be such that that dog doesn't get a second chance or doesn't get a fourth chance and they, it, it might be a mandated euthanization. And so it puts that dog's life at risk. And like I said, that dog isn't necessarily a bad dog. They might be great. They just found themselves in the wrong situations and maybe they were put there by people who didn't know any better. Um, and it's so, it's just, it's not fair for anybody involved. And when bad things do happen, there is anger and judgment flying and it shouldn't be so. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I think, I think we can all, we can all do better um, for, for our, our neighbors and for other dogs. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at today. Huh? Um, Let's see, what other points did she have? I'm, I'm so stealing and it's, <laughs> but I told her I'm so grateful for her input here. She was a really big, um, really big help. Um, but yeah, it, that, that understanding, she wanted to point out um, that like for, for a lot of us, um, most of the time, you know, we can take our dog out and not have too much worry about what's gonna happen. Um, and that ability to take your dog out and relax, it's a luxury. Um, not everybody has that, you know? Like um, my friend with, at uh, Wiggling Tail, what is it? oh shoot, Wiggling or Wagging? Wagging Tail, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, who said that her dog is, is leash reactive and my little boy back here who can be leash reactive. Um, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I have to be very aware of our surroundings um, to make sure that he has as positive experience out in the world and with other dogs as possible and that I'm able to protect other dogs. I mean, not that Dizzy has bitten anyone, but again, any dog can bite and it would be irresponsible of me as a dog owner to assume that just because he has never bitten doesn't mean that he wouldn't or couldn't. Um, under the right circumstances, we all have our limits, not just dogs, but us too, right? You know, like I would never slap somebody, but like, I don't know, maybe given the right conditions, I would. <laughs> You'd have to really push me, but, um, but hey, right? Like it, <laughs> it's, it's the same for dogs. Like they might be wonderful. And, and the other thing I think I haven't mentioned yet is that no dog wants to bite. Like no dog wants to have to like, no, they don't want to be in the position where they have to. That comes out because they feel um, forced or trapped or pushed into this situation where they have no other outlet. Um, if they feel that way, then what an animal does is bite. And dogs are animals. And, you know, unfortunately, dogs just don't get the pass that cats or birds or rodents might get. You know, if they bite, it's like, well, he bit. I don't know. Like, it just gets brushed off. Whereas with dogs... There's all this, this meaning and morality that gets attached and it's so not, um, it's not fair. It's not. Petra, hi. <laughs> she, good night. 2 a.m. and seeing Dizzy makes it okay to have some cramps. Oh, I'm sorry. Me too. <laughs> it's not a fun time, um, but oh, I'm glad. <laughs> Dizzy, you've brought some joy to the people. <laughs> um, I'm glad to see you here, but you should be sleeping, right? <laughs> I would not be awake at 2 a.m. So, um, but I'm glad you, I'm glad you joined us. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, oh, the other thing, the other thing that she pointed out is like, so far I've kind of talked about 
like the perceptions of people who don't know you. Um, but when you have a dog who's who's in this situation, um, you can also be getting this this judgment from your own family members, um, and you can get family who tells you you're doing the wrong thing or um, just 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 and family dynamics are tough enough without people thinking that they know everything about dogs and telling you that you're doing wrong by your dog or you know like that just makes things harder and so if you know some maybe you've got a family member who could use a little um help in, in understanding where you're coming from or understanding your dog or improving their interactions with any dog, um, feel free to share this video. I won't be offended. <laughs> um, yeah, it like, it's, it's no fun being judged by strangers, but it's almost worse. It's more hurtful when it comes from your own family. Um, gosh, you know, and, and, and since all of this has come up, um, I, David even, David has had uh, a different perception of what muzzles mean and, and how they feel maybe for dogs. Um, and so since we've been talking about it and I decided to, to bring it up with you guys, I decided like, I have not done muzzle training with Dizzy yet, um, but I'm going to start. Um, so yeah, we're going to make his first experiences really positive. And I'm going to record every step of the way for you guys um, so that I can put that together in a video for you if you'd want to see. Um, and hopefully I'll do a really good job um, and he will love it. Um, not because I necessarily think that he needs a muzzle, but again, he may one day, who knows? Um, and it'll be better if I've just done this work in advance. Um, so yeah, he's gonna enjoy it because he's gonna get tasty treats. So <laughs> um, it's gonna be really fun. But yeah, if, if I were to get you know, if, if I were to start doing this and, and feel like I'm getting the stink eye from David or from my mother or from whoever, um, you know, it just, it makes life harder in ways that it doesn't need to be, you know? We all want to feel uh, accepted and supported by our, our closest friends and family. Um, and so it's just another way or uh, another reason that being able to have this, have these discussions, um, and have the better understanding um, about about dogs who wear them, um, it it helps everybody uh, in in ways that you wouldn't necessarily expect, right? D Dizzy, do you want to come say hi? Hop up, hop up. That was not a. There's a the good wave. <laughs> um, but I don't have treats for him. Bad, bad Jennifer. Um, I'm sorry, baby. Oh, a paw? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will get you something special after this. There you go. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Have I left anything out? Do you guys have any questions or, or um, any other observations? Um, does anybody think that they might want to just do some f muzzle training just for the heck of it, just for the fun of it. Um, I mean, they're not, muzzles are not expensive. Um, and if you've got, if, you've, if you're if uh, you at a loss for like what you might want to train, um, it can be, you know, it's like, I don't know, even if, even though it's like a scary muzzle, uh, it can be kind of exciting to see like your dog some do something that you're just like, I never thought that he could enjoy wearing this thing. Who knew? Um, you don't have to. I'm not telling anybody they have to. I'm just, I'm just wondering if you're, if anybody thinks that they might. Um, very curious. Um, yeah. So, <sighs> one more thing about the family. Um, if you are family of a person whose dog wears a muzzle, um, and I know it is. Hang on. We just got a, another minute. Um, then it can be, it can be, it can help your relationships to, with, with your family members, right? Um, if you are able to um, see the situation with new eyes, perhaps, um, and if you're able to, to show some more um, compassion or at least maybe even curiosity about the situation, you would be amazed at how 
how how things improve. It's like you're. I I I don't know. I just it's. I've had moments in my life where I have been very judgmental. I fully admit, like I, I've been a very judgy person and it's not who I want to be though. Um, and it's not always easy. I still have to try very hard, um, in some situations. Um, but in those moments that I have consciously made this shift to like, okay, like I don't understand it, I don't think it's good, but maybe if I just ask questions and come at it from a different angle of, the, of curiosity and compassion instead, it has, it has blown my mind how much closer I can become with people, like the depth of those relationships, how they change. It's just, it's a really cool experience and it should be enough to keep it, to make it easy for me to continue to do this. But, you know, we fall back into old habits. And so I'm, I'm going to keep trying. Um, but, but it's just, it's just a thought I wanted to put in your head that like, if you find yourself, um, you know, being, being the one that's judgmental in a situation like that, like questions, questions are a good place to start curiosity rather than just judgment about what we think we know. Cause there is always more to learn. I, I am constantly learning that lesson. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it, it'll, it's a good way to, it's one way to make the world just that much better. Um, Ginger says, I think I will try it. He's well-trained in all things, but this is one thing I can't break. Um, cool. Well, if you have questions, you know where to find me. And, um, yeah, I, I want to be able to help. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to video our journey and I will share that with all of you. And if you, um, want to get started before I've got that video ready, uh, muzzleupproject.com is a great resource. Um, probably the best resource out there. Um, and yeah, there's that. Um, also, uh, if you've, read and watched all of the that stuff and you still want any kind of one-on-one -on -one support um at jennifermalloway.com there's a form that uh, you can fill out and you can schedule a um a behavior consultation with me it's one of the services that i offer so just so you know that's out there um and yeah in addition to uh that website there's some more links in the description that maybe you want to check out um and like i said if you are new and if you've enjoyed this conversation and haven't already be sure to hit subscribe if you're on youtube or on facebook you can hit uh like or follow um so that you can join us next time and thank you all for watching today and for participating in the conversation and Hopefully we'll have some fun on Friday with some food puzzles. So, all right, have a wonderful evening, you all. Love you so much. Uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.